If you're interested in making a system where you can click on a part and have a part move along a conveyor belt like a bag drop-off system, continue watching, pull out that notebook, sit back, relax, and hit that like button. Hey, what's up guys, Mac and Swiss here. And today I'm gonna show you an updated version of the conveyor belt uh, bag drop-off system that uh, I published a while back because I have been hearing some reports that people are having some trouble uh, with some of the things and the script uh, in general is a little bit iffy. So I decided to redo pretty much all of it. So without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is make our conveyor itself. So let's make uh, a part, let's make it black. Uh, you can color anything that you want and let's just make it uh, flat and in one direction. So the first major change that we're gonna do is actually make it so the conveyor belt automatically changes direction without you having to actually do anything. So how we're gonna do that is that first, we need to find out which direction is, well, the front of the brick. So we're gonna go into the parts properties over here on the right hand side, go all the way down into surface. And in the front surface, we're gonna change that to a motor. So that's gonna be the direction that the, um, that the conveyor is going to be moving in and anything that you put on top of it. So we're going to insert a script. Um, you can name it anything you want. And what we're going to do is that we're going to say script.parent.velocity um, is equal to, and what we're going to do is that we're going to take the script's look vector. So script.parent.look vector, dot C frame dot look vector, sorry. And then we're going to multiply it by five. And what that's going to do is that it's going to automatically set the velocity to um, five times its look vector. And to put it very simply, the look vector is a vector three value, which has um, the direction that the front or the part is facing in. Um, and I don't know particularly which one this is, but it'll always be one or negative one and two zeros. So what we're going to do is that we're going to anchor this. We're going to put a brick oop, on top just to give it a little test run. I'm going to move this a little bit up. And we're going to hit run just to see if it works. And nice, it works. And you can see, um, unlike the old system, if I do end up, uh, let's say, rotating it in this direction and hitting run, it'll continue to go in the correct direction as long as the front is there. And you could change the front surface back to something different. So like smooth, if you want the normal one, or you could try something else. Um, I'm just gonna leave this here for demonstration purposes now. So the next thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna start working on the uh, tool itself. Um, so this is uh, a little bit more of an optional thing. If you have a, a tool that you have already, uh, you don't need to actually do this part, but I'm going to quickly make a tool and I will be right back. So I just quickly made a sort of basic luggage looking thing. We can customize the look of it. It's not really that important currently. Um, but the main thing that I wanted to point out here is actually the very, very simple weld script that I have in here, uh, which you guys might be interested in. It's fairly simple in what it does. It looks into here um, and actually I should, yeah, no, that's fine. So what it does is that it searches through the, the descendants of the parents, uh, sorry, the descendant of the parent, uh, which is going to be everything. So the children and the children's children. And if it is a base part or a mesh part, then it'll create a weld constraint um, that connects it uh, to, and instead of here, we need to say script.parent.handle um, because we are going to be connecting everything and welding it to the handle. So now if we run it, uh, this should stay together as one part and uh, none of the parts is are going to like clip inside each other or anything fancy like that So we're gonna move this over to starter pack 
uh, just so we can demonstrate it. So the next thing that we're going to do is actually work on the click detector part. So we're just going to move over here and we're going to use this testing part as our click detector, which uh, is not exactly what I wanted, but it works. So we're going to just quickly make something right here and set the transparency to 0.7. And we can also anchor this and call this click part. Uh, we're going to add a click detector in it. And we're going to also add a script and we're going to say local click detector is equal to script dot uh, parent dot click detector and click detector dot uh, mouse click connect. So we're going to connect uh, a function to the mouse click event, which uh, fires whenever um, a player clicks on a part with the click detector. And it also conveniently gives us the player um, of that. So we can easily find um, a tool within a player's backpack by just saying local backpack is equal to player dot backpack. Um, and we can actually just rename this and we can try to find a tool and find first child. And here is where you're going to rename the tool itself. So find first child tool. And what we're going to do differently this time is that instead of just moving the parts position, we're actually going to be moving the parts C frame. So we can say uh, tool.handle because we know that there's going to be a handle inside for most uh, items. For most tools, they require a handle. And we can say dot C frame is equal to script dot parent dot C frame. And we can also do some uh, fancy stuff where we can also make sure that everything is uh, collidable just to make sure that nothing clips through. So we can say for underscore part in pairs, uh, tool get descendants, do, uh, if part is a part, or part is a mesh part, then part dot can collide is equal to true. Now, if you actually do this, then you're going to have to do some other stuff uh, within the script of your tool where you make certain parts uh, non-collidable after you equip it because you might run into some issues here. So let's just click play here and give it a test. So now when we load into the game, we're going to try clicking on here and we're going to look at the output to see if there's anything wrong. Interesting. So the first thing we're, that we're going to do is that we're going to disable the can collide so that things can actually fall through it. The next thing that we're going to do is that we're going to set uh, these parts inside the tool to uh, non-collidable, uh, the ones that aren't uh, the handle at least, though we can actually just set the handle to non-can collide as well. And this gives us another shot. All right, so now it actually works and we're actually dragging along our little very low poly <laughs> suitcase. We're going to click on the uh, part itself. Oh, we forgot to set I forgot to set the parent. All right. tool.parent is equal to script.parent. Right. So now for the third attempt, we should be able to just click on this and it should go right on through and looks like we have some issues here too. <laughs> Alrighty, let's try to fix some stuff. All right, so I think I figured it out finally. <laughs> so it seems like uh, you have to switch the parent of the tool itself uh, to the conveyor or to wherever part before you move mess around with the C frame in order for it to work properly. So just to give you a demonstration, this is when I set the parent uh, before I or if I change the C frame before I set the parent, and it'll result in this sort of weird thing where the handle is there but the rest of the uh, tool is not. But if I decide to move 
the tool to the conveyor or to the button um, and then change the C-frame, everything works out perfectly fine. So the last thing that we want to do is to actually, well, change it. So as soon as we pick up the uh, item itself, it changes all the parts back to non-collidable because currently, as you can see, we're sort of dragging it along and like we're colliding with it and it's a little bit weird. So what we can do about that is that we can say uh, in our weld script or whatever script inside this tool, we can say script.parent.equipped connect function. And what we can say is that for underscore part in I pairs, script parent get descendants do if the part is a base part or if the part is a mesh part then we can say part dot can collide is equal to false and what that'll do is that as soon as the player picks up the part again or as soon as the player picks up the tool again it'll make all the parts non-collidable so let's head back into game so now uh, we can just click and it'll move along and it'll be an actual part, but as soon as we actually touch it, it'll be back to its normal non-colliding tool itself. So the scripts and everything like that will be in the description down below. Um, but that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, my name is Mac and Swiss, the most Asian brony on the internet, and I'll see you all next time.